A thrall Old Norse, Icelandic, rail, Norwegian, trell, Danish, trail, Swedish, trall, was a slave or serf in Scandinavian lands during the Viking Age. The corresponding term in Old English was eo. The status of slave rail, eo, contrasts with that of the freeman karl, C -E -O -R -L, and the nobleman jarl, e -O -R -L. The Middle Latin rendition of the term in early Germanic law is service. The social system of serfdom was continued in medieval feudalism. Etymology Thrall is from the Old Norse rail, meaning a person who is in bondage or serfdom. The Old Norse term was lent into Late Old English, as rail. The term is from a common Germanic ragalaz, runner, from a root asterisk re, to run. Old High German had a cognate, dregel, meaning, servant, runner. The English derivation thraldom is of high medieval date. The verb, to enthrall, is of early modern origin metaphorical use from the 1570s, literal use from 1610. The corresponding native term in Anglo-Saxon society was eo from Germanic asterisk ewa, perhaps from a pi root asterisk tekw, to run. A related Old English term is esne, laborer, hireling, from Germanic asterisk asnes, cognate with Gothic asnes, hireling. A derivation from asterisk asunz, reward, from the same root as English earn. <laughs> Early Germanic law The thrall represents the lowest of the three tiered social order of the Germanic peoples, noblemen, freemen, and slaves, in Old Norse Jarl, Karl and Rail. Rigsula, in Old English corresponding to EORL, CEORL and EO, in Old Frisian Etheling, Freeling, Let, etc. The division is of importance in the Germanic law codes, which make special provisions for slaves. Slaves are property, and may be bought and sold, but they also enjoy some amount of protection under the law. While the death of a freeman was compensated by means of a weregild, usually calculated at 200 solidi shillings for a freeman, the death of a slave was treated as loss of property to his owner and compensated depending on the value of the worker. <laughs> Society Thralls were the lowest class of workers in Scandinavian society. They were Northern and Eastern Europeans who were enslaved due to being prisoners of war, incurring debt, or being born into the class via their parents. Thralls in Scandinavia had no rights and their living conditions were variable depending on the master. The thrall trade as the prize of plunder was a key part of the Viking economy. While there are some estimates of as many as 30 slaves per household, most families only owned one or two slaves. In 1043, Halvard Vebjørnsen, the son of a local nobleman in the district of Greater Lear, was killed while trying to defend a thrall woman from men who accused her of theft. The church strongly approved of his action, recognizing him as a martyr and canonizing him as Saint Halvard, the patron saint of Oslo. Despite the existence of a caste system, thralls could experience a level of social fluidity. Thralls could be freed by their masters at any time, be freed in a will, or even by their own freedom. Once a thrall was freed, he became a freedman, a member of an intermediary group between slaves and freemen. He still owed allegiance to his former master and would have to vote according to his former master's wishes. It took at least two generations for freedmen to lose the allegiance to their former masters and become full freemen. If a freedman had no descendants, his former master inherited his land and property. While thralls and freedmen did not have much economic or political power in Scandinavia, they were still given a wergild, or a man's price, which is to say, there was a monetary penalty for unlawfully killing a slave. The era of Viking raids resulting in the capture of slaves slowly ended in the 11th century. In the following centuries, more and more thralls obtained their freedom, either by purchasing it or on the initiative of their masters, the church, or the secular authority. The thrall system was finally abolished in Scandinavia in the mid-14th century. See also Estates of the realm <laughs>